you should grow this spectacular garden plant. Day one of the time lapse. But be warned, you should never eat it. And this is a plant you should never use any part of unless you're a witch or a doctor. A bit too much can put somebody into a digitoxic state. So stay tuned because this is a murder plant, AKA foxglove. But why a murder plant? Well, let me explain. You see, standing over this 800-year-old mummified body, this scientist finally solved the riddle of a mysterious death of a guy named Congrande de Escala. His name literally meant big dog. He was the patron of Dante and the Lord of Verona in Northern Italy. After a military victory though, he fell ill and suddenly died. Despite conspiracy theories, nobody knew what happened until 2004 when the scientists analyzed his body and found high levels of digitoxin and the pollen of this plant in his gut. And they concluded he was murdered through the use of none other than the foxglove plant. And here it is. This is the plant. It is an absolutely beautiful, but also very deadly plant. But my feel is that the ancients were wrong about this plant when they first described it. You see, almost everybody talked about it as a deadly plant, a murder plant, something that you would use to kill enemies or something like this. You see, this plant can stop your heart. Now the ancients didn't know exactly what was happening in the body, but they didn't have to. They knew not to touch it, not to eat it. But that was until some herbalists discovered that if you give it in very small amounts, it can be used as a medicine. The most famous case was in this little town in England, where a country herbalist known as Mother Hutton was using it to treat people that looked like this, what they called dropsy. It was body swelling. We know today this is one sign of congestive heart failure, and a famous doctor of the time, William Withering, then found out about it, studied it using modern medicine, and wrote a book on the plant. It turns out if you give someone just a little bit of the foxglove plant, they could get better. Too much, and they died. It was a very small range, and thus kind of tricky to use. And just for reference, 10 flowers. That's about what is on this section of this plant is a lethal dose for someone about my size. And that's because this plant has a compound inside it known as digitoxin. And what's even more interesting is that a related foxglove has a chemical known as digoxin, which is used in modern medicine. So to help me understand digoxin, I figured the best person to contact was, well, the best heart doctor I know, Dr. Rowan Francis, or Medlife Crisis. You know, the last 100 years, digoxin was the number one go-to drug to slow the heart down in atrial fibrillation. In a nutshell, what it does is it inhibits the, the action of a pump of sodium and potassium. By inhibiting this pump, you increase the amount of calcium going into the heart cell. So those are the three ions that are of interest. And calcium is the one we really think about when it comes to the contraction of the heart. If you increase the amount of calcium, you increase the the force of contraction. And that's what we want to do here. So digoxin is used for treating a weak heart. So this was one of the first medications that seemed to help with that. And so digoxin was used to try and treat this swelling. And I don't think people really understood that it was treating the heart until a bit later. It's got what we call a narrow therapeutic window. So a bit too much can put somebody into a digitoxic state where they can feel very unwell. They can vomit, it can affect vision and your kidney function, uh, it has to be monitored closely. And that is why herbalists these days don't really use foxglove in their remedies, except for just a very small number of fringe herbalists, mostly in Europe. And that's because it's just pretty dangerous because that therapeutic window is so tiny. And that is why I am, of course, going to be staying away from foxglove as a remedy. I will leave that to cardiologists and people who have measured out the precise amount in the lab. So now you understand why I called it a murder plant. But did you know that the genus is named digitalis, which literally translates to finger hut? So if you take your fingers, they say, and you can fit all five of your fingers in without the flowers falling off, then you can make a wish. And obviously that's just a fun thing that kids do, but there is a lot of truth in some of the other names that indicate how it was used, which I'm gonna get to. But first, speaking of names, this might be a time to talk about one of the supplements that's not toxic that I do use all the time, 
Magic Mind. And as the name implies, Magic Mind helps with brain fog, it helps with getting you in the zone, and it also helps you get into that flow state. Now, the reason for that is all of the 12 nootropics and adaptogens and uh, antioxidants that are in this. And I am excited today to announce that they just came out with two different variations, free and max. Max has 165 milligrams of caffeine, which I tried for two days just to see what it would do to me. Max. I could feel that push of caffeine right away. If you want to get that boost and you like caffeine, this one would be amazing for you. And then I tried free for two days to see what it would do. First day. I think I like free the best because I do like the taste of coffee, so I regulate my caffeine. And but that was very, very nice. But as the name implies now, there are lots of variations, so you can get yours 60% uh, off as they're releasing this new product using the QR code here or down in the description, and that is for Stone Age Man viewers like yourself. Give it a go and let us know down in the comments what you think. But let's get back to the name of this plant, sometimes called Goblin's Fingers or Witch's Fingers, which indicates maybe you don't want to touch this plant, which has been indicated by lots of people in history, including this guy, Leonhard Fuchs. He described it in the 16th century as used externally for wounds and ulcers, and sometimes internally for inducing vomiting or purging. But he warns of danger. And this guy, Nicholas Culpepper here, described it as a purge colder and to cleanse wounds. But he warned of the violent effects. And then, as they discovered the life-saving drug digoxin, scientists like Dr. Rowan Francis described it like this. Digoxin is used to treat atrial fibrillation and sometimes heart failure. If you use too much, it can cause a patient to feel very unwell, vomit, lose their appetite, so you have to monitor it closely. Besides the medicine of this plant, this is just a fascinating plant that I hope all of you can grow be very careful of if you have dogs. <laughs> so I think the lesson here is that we can learn a lot from plants. They've spent millions of years evolving these incredible compounds. I think it's also worth noting that modern medicine has really done a great job with this plant, figuring out what is the therapeutic window and how can we take compounds from this and safely treat different diseases like congestive heart failure, which my last dog had a problem with. Let's hope Zuzu doesn't have that same problem. And if you want to see more Stone Age Man content like this, I encourage you to watch this video. And we'll see you in the next one.